snapshot transit report. This is the peace dealer. And I hope you gain the utmost of quality from this report. Um, we see right off the bat, you uh, were born high nobility. Um, you have your rising in aqua, which makes you the high king. And then your son is in Pisces, which gives you the spirit of the divine prince. Um, and then your moon is in Cancer, so you have a holy soul. So given that uh, Pisces sun is uh, extrasensory perception and spirit divinity, um, you are holy divinity. And like myself, that is a Taurus rising with a Gemini sun in the second, uh, we're both royal magis, Okay. Uh, I'm the natural royalty at Taurus rising, the first level, uh, or you, you could say literally the ground floor and you're literally like the, the top of the penthouse, like the highest level. So I want to really kind of illustrate that because you paid me money so that I could literally talk, right? Um, I'm manifesting my second house Gemini right here. It's individual, whereas this is collective God level. Uh, the, the Aries, Taurus, Gemini, Cancer are the four individuals. Leo to Scorpio are the socials, the supers, and then Sash to Pisces are the God level, the collectives, the universal signs. So just to give you an idea of that, first of all, you're a gangster. Okay. You have Saturn on your rising and a stepper. You have Mars on your rising. And then you polish that 29 degrees. Venus is, is, uh, uh, extraordinarily charming. Okay. Um, this is actually a huge deal, fam. I kind of have this, except I have Mercury 29 degrees, except for v instead of Venus and then um, Venus, like in the middle instead of Mars. Um, and then Saturn is the integrity you just returned. Congrats on completing your Saturn return. You have the embodiment of knowledge as a high celestial king wizard, um, but the integrity with which to really have authority over this knowledge of self. And that's the difference as a Taurus rising. Uh, we're self-made. Um, we manifest ourselves. And because my son is in Gemini, individually, I manifest Gemini magic, air magic, truth magic, right? I literally just channel and communicate the truth. Um, you have the highest version of this as a royal magi in that you have an embodiment of knowledge. You know thyself. So you manifest divine magic, fam. I'm just saying, I'm just letting you know, I know because I can manifest truth magic. Let me give you an idea of this. Um, Gemini is like the seven year old kid version of magic. So like in the second house, this is something I have, like I have magic. All right. So like I've written stuff down on paper and it's happened. I've vocalized and said stuff and it's happened. Basic air magic. You have this at the highest level. So like, I don't, mine is just one-on-one. -on -one. It's individual thought. You are the divine collective belief. Okay. So you have the spirit of extrasensory perception. Everything that I have at the Gemini level, you have at a universal level. So like, I'm just saying like you have divine magic, just making sure we're clear. It is a quality of your spirit that you can manifest at will. And because Saturn is in Pisces with Neptune, you're transcending and anchoring and mastering this for the first time ever. Uh, me being born 1990, you being born 92, we were born like in a stage right after each other. Like I was Saturn Capricorn, you were Saturn Aquarius. So I high respect to 91, 92 and 93. You guys are legit. And you embody this integrity of knowledge of self. Uh, with the assertion to act outside the box and uh, the charm to master this knowledge of beauty. So I just wanted to give you props. This is a huge deal. Like you really, you literally got it like that. And then you're the holy divine spirit. So your soul is tapped into this depth of emotion, uh, which opens up greater, you know, psychic understanding of the extrasensory perception you're aware of. So it just means that you really can feel what other people are feeling. You're very like super naturally empathic. And I just wanted to preface that because we're going to talk about, uh, we're going to do all three of these in one. 
So we're going to talk about Venus and Mercury through Taurus, right? Then we're going to talk about Mars through Aries, okay? So um, all three of these planets are going through your third, fourth, and subsequently fifth houses and goes into Gemini. And given that as an aqua rising activation for you is first house aqua, second house Pisces, third house Aries, right? Once we get into Taurus, things start to integrate for you. Of course, as someone who knows thyself, the values with which you feel comfortable standing on and representing are going to go a long way towards how realistically you're in a position to, you know, set the foundation of um, what quality you, especially through this new moon, are growing and having really express itself, if anything. So... If we look at Mars and Aries, Mars and Aries for sure is most definitely representing the assertion of your desire. And in the third house, it's going to, as an aqua rising, not, not only make a 60 degree angle to your Mars, which we can see is at 10 degrees about to do so right now, right? But we also see is developing the authenticity of your attitude quite literally coming up on your mercury right now uh activating much more passion and originality in what you're thinking and how you'll be quite literally channeling this god of war through your brain um now the moon square will add sensitivity especially with Chiron in proximity. So if you find yourself being a bit moody or just irritable, that's because the God of War is, is challenging your soul. And it's it's having you feel deeper despite what anger or aggression you might be channeling. It doesn't have to be a bad thing, but just something to keep in mind. Uh, water and fire are very reactive. So, uh, in the third house, this is developing your original and raw abilities and skills. Uh, sextiling Mars, this is taking the knowledge of action you were born with, embodying, which is cool because I actually have Mars and Aries. And, um, before I can think about what I'm gonna, I already did it already. All right. Which is really cool until it's not because now you're a reckless asshole. And you're wondering, why didn't I think about doing it? You're not like that. You actually know what you're going to do as you're doing it and before you do it. That's why I respect Mars and Aquarius. It is a genius uh, element of action. And then to connect and assist with your Mercury that's going to real time have you process information very quickly and instinctually. Uh, Mars sextiling this is now extending this knowledge of action towards inspiring what you're ready to do right now. And that's what's going to not only develop this attitude you'll be acting off of, but as a Pisces sun, this is gearing up to be 30 to 60 degrees away from this, even though it's zero to 30 right now. So it's having you identify with the value of your attitude that will have you manifest, all right? And because this is now second house to your magic spirit, right? This is going to represent the power that your divine spirit can manifest and how the potential financial activation or, you know, being able to manifest this original value will also influence your attitude about your ability to on hand manifest money, manifest value, manifest power, all right, with your spirit that you magically manifest, okay? Um, especially your sun being at 23 degrees at current, which is within degrees of Neptune that will retrograde subsequently. Very, very badass. And uh, we also want to keep in mind that you do have Neptune 29 degrees. So, for the, you know, for the, the this is once in a lifetime, like your ability to manifest through your imagination is very transcendent and beyond what science thinks is possible. Like 
what you have is in the box of fantasy but i mean you're you're alive you're actually living anyway mars is squaring uranus and neptune that tinges your 12th uh you're destined for greatness all right and that's where the wisdom of your soul you came into this lifetime with so that you can take this empathy and you know and this psychic understanding and sensitivity and intuition and to really help others unlock this very unconventional and supernatural quality of their spiritual beliefs uh the organization and integrity of their unconscious habits and that really goes by helping feel and unlock where people might be insincere or sincere about their routine so you can help guide and direct that please understand that uranus and neptune and the north known in the 12th means that no one will ever understand your destiny so don't ever explain your destiny and path to somebody unless they're already initiated or awake it's just going to sound so goddamn delusional like it and especially with the like just don't even bother don't even bother it's it's cool though because you're not even meant to it's supposed to maintain being hidden it's kind of like i mean let's just keep it real you're you're a holy divine spirit as a as a high celestial wizard king so like your existence already you know is science fiction like you're you're not even human fam so like I, i'm gonna give you this alien construct you, you're literally the instrument of saturn you know what i mean um so i just wanted to keep that in mind like when you kind of contextualize the fact that you're more of an anime character than you are like a, a human being then it would make sense why it's hard for people to understand 99.9 percent .9 of the perspective that you manifest for the entire collective unless they're i don't know aliens or you know divine like you and i don't mean that as a compliment too but that's very very cool because now that you're unlocking all of this awareness for the first time this resituates your ability to really feel comfortable in who you are in your own skin and to have fun trolling people with your supernatural magical abilities so mars and aries is going to really set the attitude with which you take action developing how you think what you think about these abilities how you feel about integrating this with your moon and cancer and now with the square to uranus and neptune how it is you're going to create the foundation relative to your attitude about your actions around the supernatural unconscious elements grounded to guide you along your destiny but to add more sensitivity relative to the instinctual quality of your brain that triggers action and what you'll be feeling off of people's body language or insights and nuances uranus and neptune are invisible like it's it's not a personal planet so when you put mars through here this is like having a sixth sense this is like having a spidey sense and um when we now also take into account that the nodes are squaring this is challenging you to make sure that your attitude is in an original spot because that's what's going to influence how you actually move towards this path for greatness that you're destined to and sometimes you might have to take a detour to move in an original direction so that you can now of course maintain that attitude moving forward so that's a bit about mars and aries uh as it goes through aries this level of assertion will if anything challenge you to add more creativity to the direction you're taking but of course now that leads into mercury and venus in taurus now congratulations on your mercury return because well mercury is still in aries we're gonna do the transit talk in two days but the retrograde in aries was definitely necessary once again given that you were born with mercury in aries um your brain processes information very quick but this the the 90 degree square of the moon to mercury is actually really neat 
Mercury in Aries is going to be your ability to process information in, instinctually and to really communicate originally. So now when you put your soul 90 degrees away from here, it's a nuance and shade. Whereas Mercury is going to process the identity of someone or something. Now your soul enables you to feel the depth and understanding of said subject. So you're not only processing who it is, but now you're understanding the deeper feeling of it. And this will clash because your brain will want to process things instinctually the, the same time you want to feel deeper about it. And, and sometimes Aries is not trying to feel that. But then sometimes cancer isn't trying to just brush it off, uh, you know, what's the word? In very raw fashion and, and in balancing both that could be a, a, a difficulty. This is how the, the inner monologue and communication in your head can quite literally frustrate how you feel or energize how you feel. Anyway, this Mercury return uh, with the retrograde has quintessentially re-evaluated since February where you started this new cycle in Aquarius. What it is you think. All right. And not only what it is you think, it's reevaluated uh, what it is you think about yourself as, of course, now the attitude that you're moving forward with relative to Jupiter evolving your third house last year uh, is now in the fourth house facilitating a move. So let me know if you've moved. Um, we know that your IC is going to be activated the beginning, the, the end of May, beginning of June. So it's possible that, uh, the rest of this year could facilitate a move. If not last year, let me know. I always like asking that question. Uh, but yeah, Mercury is now going to carry on the Mercury, the Aries transit through your third, develop the originality of your attitude that you're communicating like a firmware update. You update once a year because Mercury takes once a year to travel through the Zodiac. And as it goes into Taurus, this is going to ground uh, very naturally. And it's most definitely going to strengthen the quality of not only how well you enunciate, but add a lot more recognition to your values that we've basically spent this entire tour season uh downloading so just like tour season is over right now now once mercury goes through everything that the sun made you aware of and venus polished and literally quite literally we're activating unconventionally mercury is gonna go through and you're gonna now wrap your brain around it oh okay this is what we did. This is what we did. So everything we did over the past 23 days was to maintain an awareness, a naturally grounded awareness of what we're worth. Our conscious awareness is having us, you know, decide, OK, this is what it is. Venus is polishing this. And so Mercury is now going to wrap our thinking around what we just been aware of before Mars comes through and takes action off of everything. Just like with the North Node in Aries right now, Mars is going to take action off of everything you have decided you want to think and the attitude and abilities you're getting, you're going to integrate over the next three months. Uh, now Mercury is going to wrap your mind around this foundation of natural value and quality that now that we've been made aware of and, and Venus is polished, you can now start communicating. You can now start processing intellectually thinking. Of course, you'll be processing naturally, uh, versus instinctually. And it is a very good look because uh, now we're going to see, uh, whereas the Aries brought this instinctual quality, this is going to slow down and make a lot more grounded and natural the value of these thoughts. All right. These are productive thoughts that will come through. And the first thing we want to see is the angle to Pluto and Aquarius that will be made as soon as this enters. Uh, that 90 degree angle is going to now break through the ground. The previous conjunction Mercury did have with Pluto and what that really facilitates is now a much more extreme, uh, I would say natural quality of taking this awakening of your personality 
and sensing how much more comfortable you have to be to account for this expansion of your comfort zone because Jupiter is in your fourth Uranus is in your fourth and as we'll talk about Venus and the sun is in your fourth so for the first time in 12 years last time since 2011 you are expanding your comfort zone and Uranus is here now we were both born with Uranus and Neptune and Capricorn as soon as Uranus 2018 entered Taurus for me that's what opened the possibility of automating income and now as this is getting ready to complete the construction to automate income for us is pretty much near complete it's it's opening up adding value it doesn't have to mean for you automating income but that is an idea of what that means as far as innovation and this is now unconventionally with uranus evolving with jupiter your home and comfort space your comfort zone how comfortable you feel in your own skin being this celestial wizard king aqua rising with not only knowledge of self but the authority with gangster saturn and then mars i mean dude this is like being judge jury and execution i'm just keeping a buck with you like this is a really stacked aquarius energy uh so you you didn't come here to play around like you you are for all intents and purposes high nobility you're 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 like a king prince both of us are king princes in the sense where we have the royal rising and then the the princely magic spirit uh which means we manifest spirit magic i can't make this up all right it's just you come straight from the realm of fantasy according to science <laughs> Um, and like you can literally manifest supernatural occurrences that help you see beyond reality through your imagination and consciousness. All right. The spirit of Pisces, sun in Pisces is aware of the metaphysical through the vehicle of imagination. This is your magical ability. And with Pluto here, that is intensifying the wisdom and, and pure energy that fuels. Oh, my God. How much more magical you have this, I, bro. I just know, just know that I know that, you know, okay, that's it. I just know that I know that, you know, you got it like that. It is what it is. I don't think a lot of people will know. And, you know, I've, I've learned the fact that Pisces are trolls. Like just go watch Tyler, the creator freestyling in front of Funk Flex. Y'all like to terrorize people with the fact that you don't even need to try. You, you, you will troll. All right. Just, I know that, you know. All right. So this Taurus energy is going to ground a lot of what's awakening for the first time as a collective you as a collective embodiment of the entire universe. In the words of Absol, I'm an entity, never mind my identity. Uh -huh. So why this is really key is this in now grounding the nature of what you're communicating with and how you're communicating over Taurus, Gemini and Cancer, right? As this will integrate is going to now take the activation relative to this firmware update this year and now ground within your five senses a lot of what you've activated with the proximity of uranus as mercury will go over uranus later this is what's going to reawaken clear senses but with so much more clarity um it's almost going to feel like you have a new antenna that can pick up on frequencies uh from such a larger 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 um you know element and quality okay and given that oh no and given that this now once again puts you in that position to realize this this is definitely getting you prepared like never before to open up in a very 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 unique element the nature of you know 
not only how powerfully you'll be in a position to now feel, if anything, so much in tune with yourself, right? But to also open up this element of, you know, so much quality oh my God. that this really puts you in a position to like, you know, not only ground what needs to be grounded, but also puts you in a position to tap into the quality of what it is. Tap into the quality of, of how you're going to begin to integrate how you express this activation. There we go. So with that being said, um, we just kind of wanted to really kind of open up this unique and important um, shift. Because once again, it, it, a lot of how it is, you're going to be in a position to maneuver through this as we go from Taurus, Gemini, and Cancers to integrate what's activated. And now that Mercury will be squaring your Aquarius energy, it's just going to challenge you to make tangible everything you know about yourself and and convert it from the abstract to the physical updated once again like a firmware update um and then of course the trine mercury is make it will make to uranus and neptune is going to of course align with your brain processing the intuitive capability that as your brain is a reawakening to this supernatural unconventional uh clair senses it will tie into your already naturally transcendent, legendary psychic power and literally like direct your brain of what to look at when in smooth fashion. And like we'll talk about with Venus, um, the grand earth trine that it will be making with Jupiter and Virgo will also now add so much natural quality to how it is you take the quality of these senses and now integrate it socially, actually experience your behavior expanding due to this, you know, influence. All right. So that's what leaves us now with Venus. Okay. Venus is now currently 17 degrees. And this is making an exact trine to Uranus in your chart and a 10 degree trine to Jupiter. So Venus, um, in getting ready to catch up with Uranus and the sun, see, Venus is going to enter uh, Jupiter with Gem Gemini with Jupiter. We're going to have the 29 degree Jupiter conjunct Venus exactly square your Venus 29 degrees. So when you had the return, now you're getting ready to come into 90 degrees of this. You do this once a year, by the way. Every time it comes through, you pass, go collect 200 and this is now the software update of your heart as a 29 degree Mercury right next to my AC. Cause I have 27 degree AC. We have master risings as a 29 degree Mercury. I am a mastermind. I will not toot my own horn. This is just a fact. Like I communicate really well 
And I've met other 29 degree Mercury's. We're masterminds. Like you meet a 29 degree Mercury, we have a cerebral apex. All right. Now, 29 degree Venuses, y'all have mastery of swag. Like you, y'all, like, like I, I can't, I love that because like when it comes to beauty, y'all are masters of beauty. I don't have 29 degrees Venus. I have a 14 degree Venus, which is not bad at all, but you know, it, when it comes to the fashion department or, or at least like romance or, 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 or relating, eh, there's still some stuff I can master. You have it mastered and it's detached and cool in Aquarius. You are the embodiment of celestial beauty. All right which doesn't have to be in any way conventional. It has a lot to do with the way you carry yourself and, and how you are this like, you know, Venusian, but also Martian and Saturnian character. So once Venus goes into Taurus, 29 degrees, one, it's going to begin to integrate on Jupiter, which is a buffer, which, which is very rare. And it's going to expand at the end of this transit, the natural quality with which you can, Stand on these values to begin to break through the ground what you started since Venus was 29 degrees and you activated this new cycle. So Venus going through Taurus is after the activation through Aqua Pisces, 29 degree Aqua, 29 degree Mercury, um, Pisces, 29 degree Aries, now getting ready to integrate at 29 degrees Taurus. And it's opening up once again the grounded attitude of the natural beauty you rest on. This is where Pluto opposite in Scorpio adds a lot more intensity relative to the social quality you maintain attached to your legacy and career, which will influence how much more comfortable you feel um, within your own home space. Okay. And, um, this definitely will put more into perspective this element once again of not only how powerfully you're in a position to really open up the uniqueness of what you're doing, but it's going to polish and smooth, smooth, uh, you know what I'm saying? Imagine you do like a uh, construction on your home and now, you know, you have to smooth what's happening. You have to clean up what's been happening, put the touch over it, smoothen it over and kind of prepare yourself to now ground as necessary, right? So you're in a better position to really enjoy uh, what it is you're able to facilitate through this. And this is what is now 60 degrees from your Pisces sun going to now make you aware of the grounded attitude you have of your home space, privacy, and inner world, your soul, your inner soul space. Um, You want to really just look at this Taurus season like a pit stop that's going to ground the castles in the sky. It's going to give you an updated foundation because now Jupiter is evolving your comfort zone. So now that you've expanded the room with which you feel comfortable based on the values you stand on, Venus is now cleaning up this construction place that Uranus has innovated. And it's just, you know, uh, rearranging the portraits in the home. It's you deciding, you know what? I have extra space now. So I'm going to put this over here. I'm going to put this over there. It's, this is even more important if you're moving. It would make sense if you're moving. Obviously, you're going to change residences or you're going to renovate your space. Venus is going to really polish this. And it's also a reflection of the values you feel about yourself within so that you can stand on this natural confidence in order to be be unshakable within. Okay. So, uh, there's that the trying to Uranus is going to add a bit of unconventionality in a transcendent fashion, which will now, of course, add more grounded layers of nuance 
relative to who you feel comfortable with relating uh, to the point that you can bring them into your private life or share private themes with them. And that's where the light trying to Jupiter will extend towards your integration towards how you take this behavior with other people and expand that uh, doubly. So we want to also take into account that as Venus gets closer to Uranus and Neptune, it will square your Aquarius energy and sextile your Pisces sun. And that's what's going to add a lot more energy around the strengthening quality of how you are really polishing this private foundation. This with Mercury that will enhance uh, and reawaken your senses will not only polish and beautify what it is you're physically sensing, but it's also going to strengthen the natural quality with which your body can be this private antenna that picks up and senses this information as you are primarily made up of water at the core and spiritually. All right. Having this celestial embodiment is most definitely going to naturally help you understand the supernatural elements of your aqua rising through the natural quality of this Taurus fourth house. Pause for dramatic effect. And thankfully, a whole lot of this natural quality and the way in which it is defined uh, reasonably challenges you to not only kind of examine who you feel comfortable with. Venus here can open up opportunities during this period or sorry, you can open up opportunities during this period that Venus is here to develop romantic connections by, you know, bringing, going out with certain people in your neighborhood. Taurus is individual. None of this is social. So this doesn't have to be as simple as like going out with people. Um, who is someone that you feel comfortable with walking around in your neighborhood, bringing to your home? Uh, this is a great opportunity to develop friendships platonically or romantically through this lens it is not limited to that so i mean if you'd feel comfortable taking someone out do that instead but um just letting you know in case you see naturally this developing like so that's because venus is in your fourth house at home so this is getting you ready as it goes to the ic in gemini to really now vocalize this updated f software and firmware of what you feel comfortable with especially now that jupiter is going to evolve for the first time again in 12 years since 2011 2012 what you're comfortable with and with who you're comfortable with okay um, we also want to now take into the, the grounds of manifestation and what more you are comfortable, you know, grounding as far as your values and what it is you want and the quality of how that influences who you are. Venus is getting ready to dead square Mars. So this is also going to influence the extraordinary action ability on your rising and once again, polish uh the way you interrelate with others with the assertion that you're moving forward with and also how this will 90 degrees from mars uh break through the ground the seeds you planted relative to the conjunction uh around january february when it went over pluto in aquarius and yeah as venus really makes it uh through uranus I would say within the next week, this is going to initiate a very unconventional once in a year cycle with Venus and Uranus uh, near not only the final degrees, but this is going to be at 23 directly sextile your sun. So the 60 degree angle to your sun is going to open up this door unconventionally and naturally to innovate once again, how flawlessly or rather effortlessly you can manifest or quite literally attract anything uh, based on what you naturally value. And now this is Uranus. So this is going to be an unconventional fashion. This is going to be in a way that almost makes obsolete an old understanding of what foundations you used to rest on. Something very 
controversial that an older generation of traditional thought will actively want you to suppress uh, because it doesn't make sense to them, but you're not meant to make sense to them. Key back to your destiny in the 12th, which is literally meant to transcend and make obsolete almost every major tradition since the past two centuries, uh, you know, back into the 18, 1700s, where, I mean, just a single day from you makes obsolete every single sci not scientific discovery, but theoretical model that uh, we've been conditioned and brainwashed to believe because it's it makes sense to them. It's materialistic, whatever. Anyway, yeah, you're breaking through that and you're not just breaking through that. You're grounding in very unconventional fashion, physical, tangible natures of what maybe we've been taught is impossible or supernatural, except you do it every day now, uh, more than ever grounded and consistent. All right. The road to Virgo is going to add consistency now that Saturn is getting ready to anchor in your second house so that you have a lot more authority over your finances. Saturn going over your first is like starting a new business. It takes two and a half years for Saturn to move through the sign, just like it takes two and a half years to get the business off the ground. And once it goes in a second, you start allocating authority over your finances. And this is going to set you up for wealth over the next 30 years. All right. It's a lot to look forward to. Uh, and so with Venus, you know, getting ready to open that doorway as it goes through Uranus, high levels of unconventional innovation. And most importantly, as we end this Venus transit at that 29 degree mark on Jupiter, this is going to be like around the 20th of May. All right. So everything you're going through right now is preparing you for the 20th of May, that entire week. That's going to be a huge culmination. That's a once in a lifetime, once in every 12 years, once a year activation uh, at 29. That's going to immediately square your 29 degree Venus. So this is going to be very impactful for you. Unlike the once in a year, 29 degree Venus square you have, Jupiter now is adding this unprecedented buffer that will evolve how much more comfortable you not only feel with your value, but how much more room there is to work with and to really, you know, add so much more that you love and appreciate and value and strengthen because this activation will harvest within this year. But this is also a 12 year cycle for Jupiter. Okay. And yeah, all of this is going to lead into Venus and Gemini traveling with Jupiter. That's immediately going to expand what it is you're comfortable uh, creating as Jupiter go through your fifth. I hope you enjoyed this transit forecast report. Thank you very much for your patience. You stay blessed as always. Looking forward to your feedback and until next time.